Is it permissible to buy health insurance, which will give a subsidized amount of medicine, dental work, eyewear, and other medical needs like surgery? Uh, the ruling on some of these actions is agreed upon, but the scholars permit it because of dire need and necessity. Remember this, like credit card is agreed upon. Uh, the credit card as practiced or published in uh, the conventional, from the conventional banks is agreed upon haram because it contains the contract country, contains the condition of riba. Even if you don't involve in riba, you don't give and take riba in trust, but the condition of riba is a serious condition. It invalidates the contract. Okay. So uh, the condition says if you are if you don't pay the money back in this period of time, you have to uh, pay more. This is riba, and I'm talking about conventional banks because some Islamic banks have a different setting. But if you're forced to, if there is uh, there is need, genuine need, or you're forced to, like in the case of insurance, because insurance as a uh, contract is haram because it involves uh, all the principles of haram transactions in Islam. And without going into the, into the details, the scholars generally in Mu'amala, they say that haram contracts, haram dealings, they involve four principles. And these are the four reasons uh, because of which these transactions are haram. Number one is riba, interest. The prohibition of riba is uh, established in Islam. Number two is qimar, gambling. Again, maisir or qimar, gambling is haram in Islam. Number three is zulum, oppression, yani consuming the wealth of people by illegal means. It's also haram, zulum. Islam is a religion of justice. And number four is gharar. Deception, deception, which is also haram. So if any of these uh, principles are present or the reasons are present, any one in a particular contract or in a, in a particular dealing, it becomes haram. And in insurance, all these four are present, whether it's uh, health insurance or life insurance, any form of insurance. And I'm talking about the conventional insurance here. We are not talking about Islamic banking. Islamic banking is completely a different topic and I don't want to go into that. So riba is present, uh, gambling is present, uh, zulum is present and uh, gharar is present. But we, if you read, you will see that some scholars have differentiated between uh, the health insurance and other forms of insurance, like life insurance. And they say life insurance is haram because it involves riba. Because the prohibition of riba is great in Islam and it's severe. That's why any contract which involves riba becomes invalid. Now the question is, if these things are present in a contract, do they become invalid or valid? And it's haram, it's sin to deal with it, that's fine. But what about the contract itself? Do we invalidate it? or it's still valid, there is difference of opinion about that. And yani this is a matter of usul al-fiqh. I will not go into that. But I will explain it. Let me explain it with a simple example. Differentiating between health insurance and uh, life insurance. They say life insurance involves uh, riba and gharar, deception. Because the money, you're paying the installments, the money you will get if, if a person dies, will be more. So interest is haram. That's why life insurance is haram because riba is involved. And gharar also, gharar is also involved in that. But if a contract does not involve riba, which is uh, the prohibition of riba is more, it only involves gharar. And it only involves deception. For example, in health insurance, uh, riba is not involved. Interest is not involved. Only deception or gharar is involved. What is that? The money you are paying, you don't know the uh, facility you will take. Will it be according to it? Will it be lesser than it or more than it? Yani if you are paid, for example, $100, will you use 
for, for the medical needs, will you use $200, $300, or maybe $50? You don't know. This is, this is ghaib. You don't know it. So the gharar is involved. This, this is the meaning of gharar. Because uh, in Islam, the business transactions and dealings must be clean, straightforward. Gharar should not be. You don't know. For example, the traditional examples of gharar in the books of fiqh uh, are very famous. For example, they say, you cannot sell what you don't possess. Uh, you cannot sell the fish in the, in the stream. You cannot sell the birds in the sky. Because you don't know. Will you be able to deliver it or not? You cannot say, I'm selling these five birds in the sky which are flying for $10. You don't know. Will you, will you be able to catch it and deliver it or not? Or it's gharar. You don't know what is the qima of this, what is the value of these birds. Until you possess it, until you catch the birds, for example, until you catch the fish, you have it, you can sell it. And the buyer also has the right to understand the qualities uh, of this commodity. So gharar is haram in Islam. But how do they differentiate? They say if a particular contract, and I listen to this carefully, understand, if a particular contract or a dealing involves riba, the contract will become invalid and it will never be permissible in any condition, whether there is need or not. If it is forced, that's another thing. And if, if it's forced on me, uh, it's a different thing. But I should try my best to avoid it. But if the contract or the dealing only involves gharar, not riba, like in the health insurance, only gharar, riba is not involved. Because the prohibition of riba is directly from the text the prohibition of riba is more severe than the prohibition of gharar. The prohibition of gharar is understood from the text. You know, we don't have a particular ayah which mentions the gharar directly. So they say, if a contract or a dealing involves only gharar, it can be practiced in dire need. So this dire need, necessity, al-haja, will make this... Uh, uh, action or this contract or dealing permissible for a certain period of time or a, for, for a certain uh, person. Okay, so uh, this is how they differentiate. Yeah? This is ishtihad. This is their opinion. It can be uh, counter argued. This is how they differentiate. They say health insurance is permissible if it is forced, if there is a need, if a person is living in a society where he cannot pay for his uh, for, for the healthcare, it's very expensive. He will face a, a hardship, difficulty for, his, for himself and his family. In that case, uh, it is okay because the prohibition of health insurance involves only gharar and gharar, things which only involve gharar can be practiced in dire need. But of course, the need will be defined by the sharia itself. Dire need does not mean less comfort. So I'm in a comfort zone. I... Uh, yani I uh, my standards of comfort uh, are uh, fixed. So if I face a little bit of hardship, I uh, get involved into haram. No. They say uh, the haja, the need which may create hardship, severe hardship, physical hardship for you and your family. This is how they differentiate. And here we must also appreciate how scholars understand matters. And sometimes we, and most of the time, we only know that appearance of a hukum, appearance of a ruling. We don't know the rationale behind and we get confused. So according to this understanding, I will say that health insurance is a bit relaxed. The best behavior is to take the path of precaution, piety, avoid all these things. But the prohibition of health insurance is a bit relaxed, particularly if it is forced, if you, you don't have any other choice than the life insurance and other commercial insurances Wallahu ta'ala. That's why you will see the, the, the almost the majority scholars, particularly in the West, they say health insurance is permissible. This is how they differentiate it.